Hi everyone, my name is James Reeves and you're watching TFB TV. Today on TFB TV, I have a confession, a gun fashion, if you will. I know I talk a big game on this program. I'm always Mr. Glock, Mr. Sig, Mr. HK. I'm always crapping on bad guns and bad gun owners like disgusting subhuman Taurus owners. I know I do that a lot, and that's why this is so embarrassing for me, and I'm hoping that you all can help me. There is one cheap gun that I carry on a semi-regular basis, and I need to come clean. Just like the story we've seen a million times when our wives force us to watch these shitty streaming service adaptations of boring English literature classics where the nobleman decides to leave the manor to go down to the Shire for a little bit of skank banging and he sires a bastard son with the lowly bar wench. He can't own the child publicly, but he still loves it in secret. I am that perv dog nobleman and my bastard child is the Keltec P380. Not just one, not two, not three. I have four Caltech P380s. I'm not kidding. Let that sink in. I have more Caltech P380s than I have children and cats combined. And that's why I'm asking for your help today. I need you guys to cyber bully me out of this nonsense. But first, let me at least try to explain to you my rationalization and why I'm where I am in life. I guess before we get started, may as well introduce you to the kids. I've got a black one. I have two twin gray ones, don't ask me why. And then this is a special little custom edition that TFB made for me whenever we hit 50,000 subscribers several years ago. In 2003, light years ahead of the game, Caltech introduced the smallest, lightest 380 and that title still hasn't been taken from them. They've got literally the smallest, lightest centerfire 380 that holds six plus one rounds. Pretty impressive, especially when you consider that they did this 20 years ago and nobody's beat them at their own game yet. But we're talking about carry guns, so what is important with a carry gun? Well, you want it to be concealable, obviously. Easy to carry, right? You also want it to be powerful enough, which is, of course, somewhat of a challenge with 380, and you want it to be reliable. Paramount factor right there, reliability. If it's not reliable, don't carry it. Fortunately, this handful of Caltech P380s meets those factors. Let's talk first about power. 380 is typically considered to be an anemic round. I believe it was invented in, I wanna say, around 1903 by Jesus Moses Browning. You guys all know him. In fact, I better not be getting a hard time about 380 from you 1911 guys because JMB himself made this round. But 380s earned somewhat of a reputation for being a soft hitting cartridge, and that's understandable. You know what else earned a reputation for being a soft hitting cartridge? Nine millimeter. But you've seen advances in metallurgy, you've seen advances in cartridge technology. It's come full circle being readopted by the FBI, by a lot of local law enforcement agencies. You're seeing it become more popular because its performance is now much better than it used to be. Similarly, you have modern 380 loadings that are penetrating 12 to 18 inches of ballistic gel, which is the FBI standard for performance, and they're doing it while being 90, 95, 100 grains. I'm not telling you to carry 380, right? I'm just saying that if hypothetically you did, it's not as bad as if you had done it 20, 30 years ago. Clint Smith does say that he wouldn't keep a 380 up his ass if he had room for a tugboat. Okay, so 380, adequate, satisfactory, like B minus, C plus performance. What about reliability of the Keltec P380? Well, Fortunately, they're pretty reliable guns. I've read a lot of reviews on them over the past almost two decades, and it seems that pretty much all professional reviewers agree that these are reliable guns. I have read issues. I've seen, I think, 
One of the weak points is the external extractor. There may have been a few that broke in the past, but I've never had a problem with any of my four, God, four, any of my four Caltech P380s. I don't think I've ever even had a failure as long as I've kept them clean. I mean, this gun's been around for almost 20 years and it's been relatively unchanged and people are seemingly satisfied with the reliability of the lowly P380. But don't take my word for it. There are also several manufacturers who have pretty close facsimiles of the design. You have the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 380. You have the Taurus, I believe the TCP. And then you have the Ruger LCP which is virtually identical. I think perhaps the only difference is the LCP uses a different extractor. But if this were such an unreliable design, I don't think that we would see so many iterations of it from other manufacturers. But what's also a critical component of reliability? And by the way, when I talk about Caltech reliability, I'm only talking about flush fit factory magazines. I don't know shit about extended magazines or third party magazines because the factory flush fit magazines are made by Metgar, M-E-C-G-A-R. Many of you gun novices and experts out there, you're going to be familiar with Metgar because Metgar makes OEM magazines in Italy for just about every gun company. They used to make them for SIG and they still make great magazines for SIG. They make them for Beretta. They make them for, I think, even Taurus. They make OEM magazines that are excellent quality and reliable. So if you get a Caltech P380, you're going to be getting a reliable magazine, and that's critical to reliable operation. But what about concealability? Well, that is what the Caltech P380 has in spades. This is definitely the most concealable 380. It's the lightest, it's the smallest, it would probably pass the squat down and cough test. At its thickest point, it is only 0.79 inches thick. At the grip, it's only 0.71 inches thick. And at its thinnest point, it is 0.69 inches thick. Nice. That makes it 20 to 35% thinner than the Glock 42, which is another 380 that I love and that I do carry on a semi-regular basis. The P380 weighs less than eight ounces empty, while the Glock 42 weighs over 12 ounces empty, even though these guns have the same capacity. But to be fair, the Glock 42 has probably about a three quarter inch longer barrel. But here's the real kicker. If you're wearing clothes that actually fit, not like crap your mom got you or like cargo carpenter whatever's. If you're wearing regular clothes, you can truly pocket a Kel-Tec P380. Here's a little Schwartz carry comparison between the Glock 42 and the Kel-Tec P380. And you can see it's not even close. It's just that rounded, more organic design of the Kel-Tec P380 that really lends itself to going in and out of a pocket. Little pocky, pocky gun. And yes, the sights are stone cold dog shit on the Caltech P380. Make no mistake about that. So is the trigger. The trigger is not that great. Now, I don't think it's as bad as many people make it out to be. You can actually shoot this gun reasonably well. But it is a heavy double action only trigger. Getting back to the sights, not to go too far afield. The sights are terrible, but they are so low profile that they're not gonna snag on anything. So that's a plus, especially if you're gonna pocket carry. A couple of other considerations, safety and cost. What I like about the Caltech P380 is it doesn't have a manual safety. I'm not a big manual safety guy, and I feel like there are a lot of people out there who think they want manual safeties, but maybe don't realize that whenever you're actually trying to use the gun, depending on the safety, that could pose an issue. I'm not saying it will. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get a gun with a safety. I don't care who you are. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying it's a factor to consider. Well, you don't have to think about it with a P380 because it doesn't have a safety, but it also doesn't have a lightweight trigger as many people might consider the Glock 42 to be. So you don't have to worry about shooting your junk off whenever you're going to retrieve this thing from your pocket. Let's not forget cost. All of mine cost under 200 bucks. And I say all of mine, but really only three of them are mine. I bought two for myself. I bought one for Lindsay, so one of those is hers. 
and then you have the fourth one that was the gift. So it isn't like I spent 800 bucks on P380s. I only spent like 400 bucks. So these guns are cheap. They're reasonably safe. They're reasonably reliable. They're reasonably powerful. They're eminently concealable, which is the big thing for me. And really guys, when I say like this is the only cheap gun I'll carry, it isn't like this is a gun that I'm EDCing, everyday carrying, right? This is something where you're grabbing a gun to just stuff in your pocket to go down to the bodega for a six pack. I know we're all Billy Badass, right? And none of us ever leaves the house without a gun, but you know there are those times where you're like, I'm just running to the car real quick. I'm just running down the street real quick. Whatever the case may be, where you're like, you know what, man, nothing's gonna happen. I don't need to go into my bedroom, throw on a belt, throw on my holster, throw on my main rig. I'm just gonna take this thing, stuff it in my pocket once, twice, every month or so. But that's the reason why I like having the kel P380 around. I like having it around. I don't like carrying it on a daily basis. I don't suggest or advocate carrying it on a daily basis unless maybe you're using it as a backup, which it excels at as well. But what I am saying is if it's one of those things where you might step out of the house without a gun just because of pure laziness, it might be a good idea to have the P380 around. So you'll just grab that instead of taking your chances. So let's be realistic here. The kel P380 and guns like it, they're not going to be ideal in terms of power. They're probably going to be a little bit lower in capacity than what you might want for like a primary carry gun but they are going to be very lightweight, very easy to carry, powerful enough to get the job done, and they may, just maybe, save your life. If what I've said in today's video resonates with you and you're like, okay, I think I can keep one of those around, I would steer you towards not only the P380, which I think is like a pretty decent, especially at the price, a decent option. I think the Ruger LCP has a little bit more features and it was a little bit better executed, although it's actually slightly heavier and I think possibly larger, but it does have a last round slide lock, right? Where if you have an empty magazine in there, the slide will lock open, unlike with the kel P380. And it's generally, I would say, a better gun, but it is also more expensive. I also like the CAR P380, actually the CW380, which is their budget six plus one gun. That works really well. The trigger's much better, the sights are better, and I think it weighs about 10 ounces. So you're getting performance that's almost on par with the Glock 42, which I also like, although the 42, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think it's truly pocketable, and at that point, you've almost hit Glock 43 in size. <sighs> Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Glad we had that talk. Glad I got that off my chest. And you know what? Now that we've discussed it, I think I might keep these little bastards around. Speaking of little bastards, thank you all for watching. Thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore, and Blue Alpha. If you want a P380, go to Top Gun Supply. If you need to feed it, go to Ventura Munitions. And if you need a belt, then you should be carrying a bigger gun. This is just to stuff in those basketball shorts when you go down to the convenience store, homie. Guys, that is it for me. Subscribe if you like the video and take care.